Hello and welcome back to Study History with Mr P and my topic summary video for the Anglo-Saxon and Norman England topic looking at the power of the House of Godwin. Now the Anglo-Saxon um, Godwin family was founded by Godwin who was an East Anglian thane who found favour under King Canute, the Danish Viking conqueror of Anglo-Saxon England. Canute had made Godwin the Earl of Wessex and Godwin then married the sister of a powerful Danish Earl so his children were Anglo-Danish. When Godwin died in 1053, the influence of his family began to reduce for a time, but they had built this up again by the mid-1960s. And they were powerful in a number of ways. Economically, the Godwin, powerful, Godwin family were very powerful. By the mid-1060s, they had control of almost all of Anglo-Saxon England. These major earldoms gave the Godwins control over a vast amount of land, and their role of elves entitled them to a third of all tax gathered from these lands. Equally, they were militarily very powerful. Each of the earldoms that they controlled brought with it a host of thanes, the warrior class. The thanes of Wessex and East Anglia undoubtedly would have had the most uh, um, loyalty and longest association with the Godwins, especially if, as we believe, Earl Godwin himself was from East Anglia. When some of the exiled Godwins had tried to return to England in 1052, they had no problem, for example, in raising an army against the king. Equally, the family were politically powerful. So the original Earl Godwin's daughter had married um, the King of England, Edward the Confessor, and this was politically important. Equally, the Godwin brothers had made some important political marriages themselves. Harold Godwinson had allied himself to Mercia and Tostig to Flanders. Equally, the family were important church patrons. For example, they'd opposed Edward's plan, plans to bring um, aspects of the Norman Church and administration to Anglo-Saxon England. An example of their power was the military campaign to Wales in 1062. So in 1062, Harold by sea and Tostig overland attacked Wales and killed the king, um, Gruffid ap Llewellyn of Wales, and sent his head back to King Edward the Confessor as proof. Harold then became like a puppet king of Wales. But there's other areas in which the Godwin family were very powerful. And perhaps one of the best examples of this is the embassy, so mission, that Harold Godwinson was sent on to Normandy. This was in the summer of 1064, or possibly 1065. He was on a mission for the king, but we have different versions of this event as to why he was on a mission. Some versions say that this was to discuss the plan for William's succession to the throne. Certainly this is the um, version portrayed by Norman sources. Many English sources portray his mission as one to recover hostages. Either way, when he travelled across to Normandy, he landed off course, was captured by a man named Guy of Poitou, but then William of Normandy came to his rescue and demanded that Harold be set free. Harold then helped William with a number of uh, military campaigns. William in turn gave Harold gifts. Uh, Norman sources have, a, have us to believe that Harold made a promise, an oath to William, saying that he would support William's claim to the throne. Now, we don't know if that's true, but that's certainly what Norman sources portray. But the embassy to the mission itself is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's important because being sent on such a mission so showed that Harold was a trusted advisor to the king. Norman sources suggest that the mission boosted William's claim to the throne, and Norman later used this to show Harold to be an oathbreaker, but equally Anglo-Saxon sources suggest that this just reinforces the claim that Harold had made to the throne. The importance of the Godwin family is also shown through the 1065 rising against El Tostig. Now, I cover this in another one of my videos, so I'm not going to repeat the content here, but to suffice to say that when Tostig lost his earldom of Northumbria due to his unpopularity and his actions, it was his own brother Harold, along with the other earls, most of which were Godwins, who didn't support the king's wish for Tostig to be re replaced as the earl of Northumbria, and in fact supported Morcar to become the northern earl. Perhaps trying to cement the way for Harold later becoming king. So I hope this topic summary about the power of House of Godwin you found useful. Uh, please take the time to check out my other videos on this Anglo-Saxon and Norman England topic along with my other videos. Thank you.